two NASCAR Cup Series teams are looking to buy charters for 2025. So who's selling and who's expanding? There was a rumor floated around on the internet Monday afternoon by the Couch Racer account, so you can weigh that however you would like, but typically they are pretty spot on with most of the things that they say. And they said that there are two tier one teams that are looking to expand in 2025, meaning they're looking to purchase charters because running an open car financially just doesn't make any sense. Of course, NASCAR and the team still have to finalize what the future of the charter system looks like because there's still no deal in place for 2025, meaning that when December 31st comes, NASCAR can go revoke all of those charters like they're the repo man getting a 2013 Dodge Charger with a 27% interest rate and an $800 a month payment. Either way, they need to figure that out before people are going to go spend $40, $50 million on a charter. Obviously, we saw the worst charter in the sport last year sell for $40 million to Spire. That means that there's likely going to be a higher price tag on that this year because some of the charters that could be in play are definitely more valuable. So who's buying is really the first question. And there's honestly three logical answers here. It's 2311 Racing, RFK, or Trackhouse. So let's just start with 2311. Right now, they have two cars, Bo Walls, Tyler Reddick, 2345. We know that TRD is pretty bullish on their development pipeline as well as wanting more cars in the Cup Series. They, of course, just added two more with Legacy Motor Club this year. If they were to add a third with 2311 Racing, that makes them up to nine full-time cars, which is pretty stout for them. Nine full-time Tier 1 cars at that. So could they be in play? Yes. Denny said that they're not looking to expand, though. but he also said they weren't going to build a new shop until the new NASCAR media rights deal got put into place and their new shop airspeed is currently open. So we know that he might not, you know, be 100% set in what he says. So does he want to go out there and spend $50 million? Well, Michael Jordan did just get a huge cash flow from selling the Hornet, so maybe that could be in play here. But it has to make financial sense for Michael Jordan and his team, who have been the biggest proponents of wanting to change the business model in NASCAR, which I think everybody's on board with except for Jim France and NASCAR, which is totally fine. That's their prerogative. They can negotiate this out. So 2311 could be in play there, whether that's the 67 full-time or, you know, another car. And who goes in that car? Nah, that remains to be seen. Do they go pull John Harnimacek over? Do they get Corey Heim? Do they find another driver the kind of the same way they did with Tyler Reddick and put him into the car? It remains to be seen, like I said. But 2311 Racing could be one of those teams that's looking to expand in 2025. Another team that's looking to expand, RFK. So Brad has talked openly about wanting to expand RFK's racing footprint. They were down at Sebring for the 12 hours there to explore potentially having an RFK team in IMSA, whether that's GTP or more than likely in GTD. We'll have to wait and see on that one. But he has talked about wanting to add a third car, adding a truck team, add an Xfinity team. And maybe they are, you know, ready to add that third Cup Series team. We obviously saw them run a third team, the number 60 car at the Daytona 500 earlier this year with David Reagan. So that could be in play here. Who would they get to drive? Uh, Who even knows at this point because the Ford Pipeline, because the Ford Pipeline is drier than Arrakis at this point. So I don't know who they're going to go get. And do they have the money on their side? Obviously, the Fenway Sports Group is where their financial backing comes from. So potentially, maybe they want to expand knowing that these charters are going to be worth more money as the years go on. Again, assuming a new charter deal is in place. And then the other team that could be looking to expand, Trackhouse, of course. Justin Marks and Ty Norris over there just continually have their name out in everything, right? They currently have deals with Spire, with Colleague to run both of their cup drivers that are under contract right now, SUG and Zane Smith. They have two in-house cars for Ross Chastain and Daniel Suarez. They obviously want to expand. I don't think there's any, there's no surprise there. The question now comes down to, can they get two charters? Can they get one charter? What's going to happen here? Obviously, $40 million is a steep price. Trackhouse right now is currently backed by Justin Marks and his family's money. Do they want to put up 40 to $50 million for another charter? I don't know. If they probably, you have logical thinking would say if they wanted to do that, they would have bought the Live Fast charter last year. And instead, Spire buys that. And then they're now fielding a third Spire Cup car for Zane Smith, who is on loan from Trackhouse. Zane Smith's contract with Trackhouse. Trackhouse also has Shane Van Gisbergen under contract as well. Shane Van Gisbergen, for all of the Fox and NBC announcers that continually cannot figure out how to say his name. He's under contract at Trackhouse as well. 
and he's running select cup dates for Colleg. And then, of course, they have their two drivers. They would love to have three charters, if not four charters. But the future kind of remains cloudy. Does Daniel Suarez stay past this year? Is he back at Trackhouse in 2025? If he's not, that kind of frees them up a little bit to where they don't exactly have to purchase a charter. But if they wanted to do it and bring all three other cup drivers in-house, it would make sense. Getting rid of Daniel Suarez allows them to move Zane Smith back into, you know, the family, into the shop there at Trackhouse. And then they could put SDG over in that 71 car if Spire wanted to continue that relationship. So that's a possibility there. If they do purchase a third charter, well, then they don't have to worry about the Spire deal. They can instead just have all of their people in one spot. So that's kind of, I think, who is in the market to purchase charters right now. Now the bigger question is, who's selling charters? Which is a really good question because... I think there's three main people that I could see selling charters at the end of the season. First up is Colleg Racing. Obviously, Colleg on the Xfinity side is a powerhouse, except for the Josh Williams portion of it. Other than that, they are really strong on the Xfinity side. They've won races. They've contended for championships. AJ Allmendinger will definitely be back in victory lane at some point this year. And Shane Van Gisbergen likely will be in victory lane at some point this year as well. So Colleg on the Cup side, though, is an absolute dumpster fire. They just don't know what they're doing. Of course, they do have two NASCAR Cup Series wins with A.J. Allmendinger, 2021 at the Indianapolis Road Course, and then last year at the Charlotte Roval. But other than that, there hasn't exactly been much to write home about. Now, Colleg, Matt Colleg, does have the option through his minority group that owns a portion of the Cleveland Guardians to purchase that team outright, I believe, next year. Could they want to free up some cash? Maybe. Does he need to? No. He has more than enough money to make all of this work. But if their Cup Series team isn't performing and there really is no clear path for them, they're not a Tier 1 Chevy team. They're kind of a Tier 2 Chevy team on the Cup side, if not like a two and a half. Is there a logical spot for them? Or do they try to just sell their two charters, bank $80 million, and then cut their losses and just feel a really competitive Xfinity Series team? I think that's probably a good idea at this point. Because their current approach to the Cup Series just isn't working. Daniel Hemrick's not a Cup Series driver. And then the 16 car is a rotating cast of guys that do belong there. And then some guys where you're like, I don't know if I'd put them in an Xfinity car, if we're being honest. So that's kind of up in the air. But if Colin wants to sell their two charters, I think that's definitely in play for those other three teams, like I mentioned. Another team that's going to get a ton of talk as the season progresses, is Stuart Haas Racing, and will they downsize? And if they do, that could free up a charter, if not two charters. We'll have to wait and see on that. Their contract with Ford is up at the end of the year. We don't know who their manufacturer is going to be for 2025 or what that's going to look like. So that's kind of up in the air at the moment as well. If they do sell those charters, those are pretty valuable charters right there. It would allow Gene and Tony to both pocket a good chunk of change and then you know potentially not have to worry about their current struggles as they're ongoing. One thing I do want to mention, though, a lot of fans seem to think that charters are tied to the manufacturer. They are absolutely not. I saw people on the internet being like, oh, you have to think RFK is going to get one of those SHR charters through Ford. Ford has nothing to do with this. This is a free market. Stuart Haas Racing selling to the highest bidder at this point, whether that's a Ford team, whether that's a Chevy team or a Toyota team, they don't care. They want to get the most money for their charter, and that's what's going to happen. Do I think they're going to downsize to two cars? No, I could see them downsizing to three cars and potentially staying with Ford, maybe moving over to the Chevy side. Three is a lot to take on for Chevy. If they downsize to just two cars, I could see that definitely being a move to Chevy. We'll have to wait and see on that one. And then the other team that kind of comes to mind is Rick Ware Racing. So Rick Ware has put a ton of effort into making their cars more competitive this year. And it's absolutely shown, right? I just don't know if they are committed to this long term. They, of course, have a relationship with RFK, and they've talked openly about Justin Haley wanting to be over at RFK, and RFK has talked about Justin Haley. So potentially, maybe that's where their third charter comes from. They work out a deal with Rick Ware, they buy one of the charters, Rick gets the pocket, a good chunk of change, and then everybody goes home happy, and Justin Haley's now over at RFK. What happens to the other Rick Ware charter? Ah, remains to be seen. Maybe they operate as a one-car team and then sell it if the price of charters continues to go up. Either way, it looks like there's going to be a lot of movement on the charter side of things and teams potentially adding another car for next year, which is never a bad thing. 
Anytime a tier one team wants to add another car, we should all sit around and applaud, applaud because that's good. More competitive race cars on the track is never a bad thing. So I'm here for it. Let me know in the comments who you think's buying, who you think's selling. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Braycard, Instagram and Twitter at Braycard Blog.